Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition's top stories. St. Lucia records 9th and 10th COVID-19 related deaths. Minister for Agriculture reflects on the year 2020. And CARICOM leaders call for a global summit to address equitable access and distribution of COVID-19 vaccines. Health officials have guaranteed that the rate of COVID-19 patients requiring critical care remains within the sector's capacity to manage. At news time, only one of the 331 active cases in care were listed as critical after two patients had succumbed. Ensuring adequate medical equipment is one of the measures taken to avoid overwhelming scenarios. We've increased the ventilator capacity to manage COVID-19. We have 24 new ventilators. Um, and also the other oxygen machines that's, that's being used as well. Um, for COVID-19 generally, in terms of the percentage, it's 5% of cases that usually needs um, critical care within your, your hospital. The clinical team, they're monitoring the, the situation in terms of setup. Um, there, we always ensure that we have extra um, ventilators prepared just in case. St. Lucia's 9th and 10th cases of COVID-19 related deaths are female nationals aged 71 and 63 years old. Both were in care at the time of their passing this week. Meanwhile, health officials confirmed 42 new cases of infection and 58 recoveries on the 21st of January 2021. The steady rates of recovery are a great relief to the sector. However, officials have instituted a management system to avoid burdening the health sector. This includes permitting self-isolation. With the increasing number of cases, we have taken a policy to allow isolation at home for persons who meet the criteria and are asymptomatic or very mild. The capacity to be able to keep, and these are mild and asymptomatic um, persons, most of them, we only have one person in critical care. Um, notwithstanding, persons who have moderate or don't have the conditions at home for isolation, we keep those within the hospital setting. So the, the patients that we have at the respiratory hospital, the majority of them do not actually need hospital care. They're there for isolation because they don't have safe isolation conditions at home. We're also using some um, guest houses and inns to house some of those positive patients. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George. As part of newly instituted measures to prevent the spread of COVID-19, the government of St. Lucia has announced the scale-down of commercial activity for 10 days. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Commerce, International Trade, Investment, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs, Sophia Henry, advises of several implications with respect to commercial activity on Ireland. Commercial activity will be scaled down over a 10-day period from Friday January 22, 2021, at 6 p.m. until Monday, February 1, 2021. During this period, the services which can be rendered or businesses which are allowed to remain open and engage in activity include the following. Supermarkets, minimarts, small shops, bakeries doctor's offices, diagnostic and lab services, pharmacies, and other related health support services, farming, fishing, and other agricultural activities, food supply and preparation services, example restaurants, takeout services only, approved COVID-19 hotels, utility companies, gas stations, petroleum services, financial, including banking services, law offices, accounting firms, sanitation, solid waste management services, standalone hardware retail, call centers, broadcasting and media services, manufacturing and export related services, customs brokerage, courier services, 
vendors, public transportation, garages, critical public sector projects, and other ongoing private sector construction projects. A more comprehensive listing of services allowed will be available on the website www.covid19response.lc and the various government online platforms. The services and businesses listed are to operate under established protocols and are further urged to adopt a blended approach that is a combined physical and virtual component where practicable so as to limit the person-to-person -person contact. This suggests that where possible staff are allowed to work from home while meetings and other conferences are to be held virtually. Any sector or business not listed should remain closed for the 10-day period. For businesses seeking additional clarification on these matters, kindly contact your commercial membership organizations or the Ministry of Commerce at email mincommerce at govt.lc or our contact number 468-4218. You are further reminded that business operations and commercial activities must cease no later than 9 p.m. The government of St. Lucia fully appreciates the adverse impact that these measures may have on commercial activity on island and on the livelihoods of our citizenry. We do not take this decision lightly, but rather we move forward in the best interests of the health and safety of all our citizens. The objective of these new measures is to limit the movement of people in order to prevent further transmission of COVID-19. The year 2020 has been a challenging one the world over, and for St. Lucia, the situation is no different. The government of St. Lucia has been confronted with a number of challenges with the coronavirus tipping the scales. The Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, reflecting on the past year, highlighted the many challenges and triumphs for the sector. Hamadi Mark has the details. Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Isikal Joseph, explained that the COVID-19 pandemic is not the only thing affecting the agriculture sector. Speaking to the banana industry, the minister disclosed that both Winfresh UK and Winfresh WI have gone into receivership. Despite the situation, St. Lucia remains the only shareholder still exporting bananas to the UK. Having said this, the minister explained that opportunities also exist, opportunities that the Ministry of Agriculture will be exploring. This year, we have to really focus, especially early in the year, have to focus as to how we restructure the, this, that industry and for us to continue to build the confidence of the farmers or the members who are, whose farmers who are still involved in the banana industry. I'm sure you would agree and you would realize and generally St. Lucians would realize and agree that since we came in in 2016, um, the, the project that we put in place, we have seen benefits. We have seen more farmers get back into production. We have seen the acreages um, increase. So that is a sign that the, the farmers are buying into the policy as it pertains to the, that industry. But of course, like you would know, and you'll put, if you have to put in your extension hat, um, one of the main things, or the main challenges for us to continue, and for farmers to continue, is a reliable market. Yes. All right? And if the market is not then giving support to the farmers on a timely basis, and if farmers are not being paid on a timely basis, that can be very discouraging. Mm -hmm. The Ministry of Agriculture has taken the lessons learned with the closure of the Winfresh entities seriously and denoted that it cannot be business as usual. Looking closely at another entity, the National Fair Trade Organization, NFTO, Minister Honorable Joseph said the mode of operation must change. The cabinet, under the leadership of the Honorable Prime Minister, um, did give financial support on many occasions to the NFTO. Okay. Um, but cabinet was saying since the situation with, the, with, the, with Winfresh, cabinet was saying, look, um, the time has come for us to understand and for farmers to understand and for the leadership of the NFTO to understand mm -hmm. that they should not seek the government as a cash cow. Yeah. 
right? Each time things go bad, run Below. to government for, 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 for money and, 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 and the management of the organization is not performing to a level that we are satisfied with. The Ministry of Agriculture is committed to working with the entity for the betterment of all stakeholders. Still with agriculture, Minister Honorable Ezekiel Joseph explained that it is paramount that the National Fair Trade Organization, NFTO, become self-reliant. He stated that the NFTO recently requested financial support from the government of St. Lucia to the tune of over $8 million. Minister Honorable Joseph noted that the government cannot continue with these financial bailouts. He added that a critical step in bettering the organization is the restructuring of its management. The last time the board met last year with the, with the cabinet, that is the board of the NFTO with cabinet, it was, clear, it was clearly articulated to them that for government to continue to give support to that industry, there must be some serious restructuring of the NFTO to a level that we are satisfied with. All right? um, they agreed. Um, and through the ministry, we hired a consultant and the consultant went out there and met with mostly all the farmers branches, met with members, met with the executive, met with some of the stakeholders, and to come up with some recommendation options as to how we could restructure the NFTO. Officials from the Ministry of Agriculture have met with the NFTO to discuss the recommendations, which include the amalgamation of member organizations and a board of directors comprising of four individuals selected by the NFTO and three selected by cabinet. What was also agreed was that, I'm saying agreed between the Ministry of Agriculture and, and the NFTO, that the chairmanship of the new um, board mm -hmm. would be a member of the NFTO. Okay. All right? I want to say regret regrettably, the cabinet did not agree with that aspect. We said, the cabinet said that whilst we ag they agreed the composition of for free composition, but the chairman should be a member of the, one of the three directors that um, government is recommending to be on the board. The NFTO is expected to meet with members to make a decision on the offer presented by Cabinet. Cabinet has concluded before any additional financial support can be provided to the organization, there needs to be an improved organizational structure, a holistic plan for the banana industry, a plan to provide support to farmers, a proper marketing strategy, and a plan for the reduction of quality claims. St. Lucia's population is part of nearly 1 billion people to be immunized in the Americas against the COVID-19 virus. Pan American Health Organization's director, Dr. Carissa Etienne, says the task is daunting but not unrealistic once authorities remain committed to the process. PAHO, she says, will play a key role supporting countries along the way. At present, seven countries in the region are vaccinating their populations as part of bilateral agreements. St. Lucia and other signatories to the COVAX facility are expected to join in the coming weeks, commencing their own immunization programs. The COVAX facility is a global mechanism to source COVID-19 vaccines to ensure equitable access to the vaccine by all participating countries. As we speak, COVAX is actively negotiating deals with Pfizer and with further announcements what can be expected in the near term. Vaccines are expected to reach countries by March, if not a little earlier. PAHO's revolving fund, which has four decades of experience procuring and distribution vaccines, will play a key role in this process, supporting countries along the way. In addition to vaccines, the fund helps member states with the acquisition of syringes, safety boxes, cold chain equipment, and other supplies that allow vaccines to be safely delivered to every corner of our region. Having a comprehensive, safe plan in place will greatly facilitate the successful vaccine rollout in any country. All PAHO member states participating in the COVAX facility are developing a national vaccine deployment plan that is adapted to their context and their population. So far, 18 countries have shared the national vaccine deployment plans with PAHO for feedback, 
and 23 countries have completed the vaccine readiness assessment tool. The vaccine rollouts already underway are also generating important lessons for the region. We are seeing, for instance, the, important of, the importance uh, sorry, of assessing the readiness of each health facility where vaccines will be distributed and administered. And we're also learning just how critical it is to have strong information systems in place to find target populations and to track vaccinated, um, vaccinated individuals. By hearing these lessons now, countries will be better prepared to introduce the vaccines as soon as the doses are available. Dr. Etienne further stressed equitable access to vaccines when they are introduced to populations in the region, first attending to frontliners and others most at risk. Since the start of the year, the Americas has registered 2.5 million new cases of COVID-19, more than half of all global infections. This is NTN Nightly. Stay with us. When we come back, CARICOM leaders call for Global Summit to address equitable access and distribution to COVID-19 vaccines. On accident encore, eh, eh, mi de bef mola, on go to ho, et pi yon bel vache. Des machines croisées et moun blessé. Ah, non, mes ici, dames. Bagay sala kan ni pou dobout. Stray animals are endangering human lives and property. Livestock owners, please ensure animals do not stray on roads, highways, and public places. Remember, sections of the Animals Act 2005 states, stray animals will be seized and put in a pound by authorized persons. Owners will be liable to a fine of $5,000 or two years imprisonment or both. Save innocent animals. Save human lives and property. A message from the Department of Agriculture. Welcome back. CARICOM leaders call for a global summit to address equitable access and distribution to COVID-19 vaccines. We hear more from CARICOM News Time to Sanking English Francis. CARICOM member states have signed on to the COVAX facility, the globally coordinated mechanism for providing equal access and affordable vaccine options against the novel coronavirus. However, CARICOM heads of government are concerned that the current trends are revealing inequitable access for small states to begin vaccinating frontline workers and the most vulnerable populations. In a statement on January 13th, CARICOM heads of government called for a global summit to discuss equitable access and distribution of COVID-19 vaccines through the World Health Organization's Access to COVID-19 Tools, ACT Accelerator Facilitation Council. The community also underscored how much a vaccine is tied to the economic recovery of regional economies. CARICOM News Times to Sanking English Francis. As part of efforts to widen the coverage of COVID-19 testing within the Castries to Grosily Basin, the Ministry of Health and Wellness has established a temporary testing site at the VG Sports Complex in Castries. Persons with respiratory symptoms and those who are referred from contact tracing can access free COVID-19 testing at this site. This activity commenced on Friday, January 22, 2021 from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and will continue on Monday, January 25 to Friday, January 29, 2021 from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. daily. The intervention will also focus on health education on COVID-19, including the promotion of infection prevention and control measures. All coming to this location are required to bring a valid form of identification. The Ministry of Health asks for your cooperation. The Rich for Wellness Centre has been closed for retrofitting works from June 12, 2020 under the Smart Health Facilities Project towards safer, greener and more sustainable facilities. Retrofitting works are complete and services will commence on Monday, February 1, 2021. In light of this, services at the temporary location in the building at the Larisius Junction will be suspended for one week from Monday, January 25, 2021 to Friday, January 29, 2021 to facilitate the move back to the original site. During this time, clients can access healthcare services at the Denry Hospital. 
The Department of Health and Wellness thanks the general public, especially for those from the affected areas, for their continued cooperation and apologizes for any inconveniences caused. The Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment wishes to notify all clients of the Public Assistance Program, PAP, of Babono, Castries, Grosile and Susi Millet regions that payment for the month of January will take place from Monday 25th January to Wednesday 27th January 2021 at the Castries City Hall from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. daily. New PAP clients' payments will be processed at their financial institutions. For further information, please contact the Ministry at telephone number 468-5108. The Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment hereby informs all clients of the Public Assistance Program that a recertification exercise within the Castries Basin that reviews previously scheduled for Monday 25 January to Friday 29 January 2021 from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. daily has been suspended until further notice. Clients are advised to lodge their queries and other requests via the use of the forms that will be stationed at the securities desk at the Graham Louisiana Administrative Building. An officer of the department will arrange to facilitate a telephone interview with the respective individual. Under the revised COVID-19 protocols, the unit will cease its operations at the VG Sports Complex. Beneficiaries of the Public Assistance Program are therefore asked to pay close attention to the media houses and radio stations for recommencement of the recertification process. That brings us to the end of NTR Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat so catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norvell.